guys, and welcome to Learn Free Music Theory, lesson number 43. So in today's lesson, we're going to be tackling a little bit more of a difficult topic. We're going to be talking about hybrid time signatures, and also we're going to talk about how to do the rest on them, and a whole bunch of stuff. So I hope it doesn't turn into an extremely long video, but we'll do the best that we can. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get right okay. into it. So the first thing I have to explain to you before I start talking about hybrid time signatures is how do we make them? How did, what is a hybrid time signature? So that's what we're going to first kind of talk to you about. Now, the first thing you have to start doing is you have to kind of think a little bit differently now about how your beats and your, everything is grouped together. So before we always said that, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's a beat. Like one is a beat, two, three, four, five, six, right? In six, eight, ten, we'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Well, if you listen to high count, don't you hear a slight accent on the one and the four? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Because remember, we learned that at strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, right? So something else is happening again. So, this leads to the, the phenomenon of something called main beats and then also pulses, okay? So a pulse is just the beat going by, like one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, with no real different difference between the two. So a pulse is each note where each, it's um, sort of hard to explain. <laughs> it's not as easy as it is in the, the other uh, levels. I'm trying to do my best here to, to try to explain this, so hopefully you guys don't get too confused. I was trying really hard today trying to figure out how am I going to explain this in a really easy way. But basically, you know, I didn't actually come up with something that I thought would really, really work. So I was like, well, I'll just do it and hopefully it comes out. <laughs> so anyway, basically what's happening is the main beats are like groups, okay? It's like right here. Normally, uh, if we were going to be splitting the bar in half, we would write these a dotted half, a dotted quarter, and a dotted quarter. Okay. Now, we can expand those to you know three sixteenth notes, but you see how they're grouped. If we were like we would never just write a sixteenth uh, like a bar like this and have them all grouped together in one. Why not? Because this is the main beat, so they go in groups of three. Okay. So it's always going in groups of three. Just like when you have nine, eight, ten, you go in groups of three, or twelve, eight, right? You're going to be going in groups of three. So here we're using a compound grouping or compound main beat. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Whereas the duple is one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's like a march, right? So you're like one, two, one, two, one, two. So notice how I'm hitting my leg. <laughs> I'm hitting my leg once, but I'm going one, two, one, two, one, two. So my mouth is actually saying the pulses and my hand is keeping track of the main beat. So one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you hear the difference? So I have a main beat and I have uh, pulses going on. <laughs> okay, so I didn't explain this before because you didn't need to know that before. It was just, it's going to fall into place. So I wanted to leave it until now and try to explain this. Because I wasn't too thrilled. To, <laughs> I, don't, I guess I'm not the big. I don't really like teaching rhythm the most. As I've probably said before, rhythm is the one that I don't like teaching the most. That's why I guess I'm not a drummer. But anyway, I'm going to try to do the best that I can here with this. So these... I think I kind of showed you like the main beat, like if, uh, if I was tapping my, like hitting my leg again, <laughs> I could go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the main beat is the grouping. So one, two, three, and the next grouping is one, two, three, or four, five, six. And so each uh, eighth note there is the pulse, or uh, it's going to be one part of that grouping. Okay. Um, so now, hybrid time is when you take one grouping or main beat from one time signature, like a compound time signature, and then you take one uh, grouping or main beat from a duple or a simple, I should have said simple time signature, okay? So you have one, two, three, 
you know, something like that, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And now you take them and you put them together. So look, we've got this and this. So this is a main beat, that's a main beat. And so this is the main beat rhythm, this is the pulse rhythm, and then these are the notes that I have written in, okay? Now, I could actually take some of these notes out and I could make, you know, that a dotted and make that a 16th note and alter the rhythm a little bit, but the pulses are still gonna be the same. It's still six pulses, okay? Now, now, what I do here is I take, so maybe half from here and half from here, and then I put them together, and that's called a hybrid, right? Just like there's hybrid cars where it's gasoline and electricity coming together to make something different. They're two separate things, but now they're working together. So that's the definition of a hybrid time signature. Okay, so say we want to make this, the most simple uh, hybrid time signature you can have is five. So we're going to go with 5-8. Just because we're using eighth notes here, it's a great example to start with. Okay, so I'm going to take one of these halves or one of these main beats from the 6-8 time and put it here. I'm going to take one of these and put it over here. And that is hybrid time signature right there. Now, does it have to be this dot first or the quarter? The answer is neither. You can actually have some pieces, you could have it with the dotted quarter here, and you could have the quarter by itself over here. But really, you could also have it the other way. <laughs> okay? But I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself um, because I want to next from here is go and show you the different types of uh, hybrids because there's hybrid, I I'm not going to say it actually, I'll just show you in the next part. But anyway, so. What I want to show you or tell you, talk to you about basically is that main beats occur the groupings, like uh, what you're going to be feeling, okay? And the pulses are like the little things underneath. So main beats will be bigger and they're going to be either in dotted for the compound or um, not dotted for the simple time. Okay, and so a hybrid duple time signature is when you combine one from each type and then put it together. So look, I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I could go one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So see how that sounds different? Now I could switch it and put this main beat over there and this main beat over there. And now it goes. One, two, three, four, five. 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 So you see how now it changes again? So there's two ways you can do these time signatures like this. One is you can have a continuous pattern. So whatever you pick, whatever the composer picks at the beginning, you know, they can have the dotted and then the not dotted, okay? And it can just go like that for the whole time. It's just going to go. One two three one or one two three four five one two three four five just the same thing over and over, or you know they could pick the other way and make that keep going, but the other way is to actually just have a, uh, an alternating pattern too, so it can actually go back and forth. So you could have like this, like one two three four five one two three four five one two three four five. One, two, three, four, five. So see how it's going back and forth now. So you can have that as well. And so that's called an alternating pattern. Okay? So it can either be continuous or alternating. And some pieces will have both in them, so you, you should really watch out for that. So anyway, so now, why is this called duple? Like we have hybrid duple time. Well, what is duple about this? This is really, I mean, when you just look at this, you're like, what is duple about it? Okay, try not to look so in deep, but now take a step back, and now see this orange line right here? How many sides do we have to this? Two! <laughs> Two sides. <clears throat> I was eating dinner today, talking to my dad, and rice like got on my uh, lung or whatever, and I was coughing, coughing, coughing for like five minutes, maybe ten minutes, drinking water, trying to flush it out or whatever. And I was like, oh, I, I hope I can still do my <laughs> recording tonight because I, I was, you know, preparing for this lesson for most of the day. So I was just like, yeah, I want to do this. But anyway, okay, so 
Um, yeah, just be glad that I'm talking right now. <laughs> okay, so see this? Duple means two, or it comes from what is the meaning of two. And we have two parts to this, okay? So that's a very important factor because it's going to be the main point of hybrid time signatures is you're going to be looking at how many parts there are and what the main beat is doing. So this is one main beat and this is another. But if you look more closely, like microscopically, then you see little beats inside each of these main beats. Or uh, That's why we use a different terminology so it's not so confusing. Pulses inside the main beat. Okay? Up until now, you've always heard, you know, okay, this many beats, but when you have main beat and beat, then it starts to get a little bit crazy, so we just change it to pulse. Okay? Anyway, so that is uh, the very first part here. Now we're going to go in and look at the different types that we can have. Okay, so here's the next scary chart. <laughs> okay, so this is an overview of the three different types of hybrid time signatures. Okay, so first up, we already know duple, but we're going to go there and just look at what, I, what else I've written here. So I'm just going to slide over. Okay, so duple, as we know, it has two parts, right? Now, the different duple time signatures you can have are 516, 58, 54, and 52. Okay? Um, now, there's probably other ones like really far out there that you could probably rationalize and, you know, music is creative so you can really do anything you want with it. Um, but if you're doing for an exam and stuff like that, this is just the parameters for that you need to know at this level. So you might know more if uh, you go, went to like a college or university level. But for now, this is all you need to know. Okay, so just 516, 58, 54, 52. So just focus on those ones because those are like very, the very common of them. And keep in mind that hybrid times aren't common, okay? <laughs> They're very, un you're not going to see them very often. Uh, I've only ever seen 54 and 58 in my playing, like playing piano. And that was at love, uh, grade 10 that I saw it. So, you know, I don't see it very often. And I've never come, ac I have come across a 7 8 once. And that's it. Out of all these, I've only ever come across 7 8 once, 5 4 a couple times, and 5 8 once. So, not very common, but we're learning about them. Okay, so those are our time signatures. Now, down here, I have 3 plus 2 and 2 plus 3. So, that's representing the compound versus the duple and how you can combine them, which I'm going to show it later right down here. So just remember that they can be placed either way. You can have the three or the compound, and then the two, the duple, or the simple coming out after. It doesn't matter which way you do it. I didn't write down all the combinations for these because, uh, like for this one especially, because you have four digits, so there's a lot more combinations. Okay, anyway, so coming down here, now we have the blue and the blue. This is our main beat again. And I used a different time signature so that you can see a comparison. And now, here I've added an S and a W. And can you guess what those are? Yeah, they're the good old strong and weak beat friends that we used to have back in the day. <laughs> so, we're going to be using them again. Just, I'm showing you um, that now, when we do hybrid time signatures, it's, this, it's the main beat that actually gets the strong or the weak beat. Okay? So we're looking at, it's almost like there's two, lo two layers here now. We have the, the greater layer, which is the main beat layer, and then the lesser or micro layer, which is the um, like pulse layer. So here, look at this. So our main beat is a dotted half note with, a dot, with just a regular half note. One, two, three, one, two. Okay. Here, this is what I had drawn out. So it's a dotted half note with two quarter notes. So it's obvious that this is going to be our three and our two. Okay, now, under here, now we have to draw the pulses, or the beats that we used to call them. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So that's that one. Just a nice little review there. Okay, now, moving along. Now, by the way, this gets really, it sounds really crazy when you're learning this stuff, if you write it like this. Hybrid triple time, or hydra, hybrid quadruple time signatures. It's like, what? What am I looking at? So what I did is I just put types of hybrid, 
And then I just put duple, triple, quadruple, so it's easier to remember and a little bit more approachable. Okay, so the next part here, triple. Triple uses sevens, okay? Because uh, we're going to use uh, one, three, and two twos, okay? Just again, this in this example of what this is what I want you guys to learn. Okay, so here seven sixteen seven eight five seven oh <clears throat> sorry <laughs> seven four and seven two. So seven sixteen seven eight seven four and seven two. Okay, now those are it's the same idea. You're just putting it into a different. You're expressing it differently in a value of, in the value of notes that you're using. Okay, so. Down here, here's a, these are different combinations you can do. You can go 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, and that's pretty much all you can really do with that. So, um, next up, down here, now, remember when we had a compound time signature or groups of three, we had to go strong, weak, weak, strong, weak? Strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, right? I didn't add one extra week there. <laughs> but here, see, look, again, Looking at it from the greater view or the macro view, it's one, two, three. This is one, two, okay? Quadruple is one, two, three, four. So we're using the strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, strong, weak, weak, like that. So you're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> and that's where it starts to really start sounding weird or at least not common, like, yeah, anyway. Okay, so, now looking down here, this is the beat pattern we have. So this would be something that you'd probably have to do in a, uh, like some homework or something is, I'll show this to you now instead of me trying to just explain it, is what, I, what you could do is draw out a pattern with a hybrid time signature, and then you're gonna put, you're gonna have to mark in where the pulses and the main beats are. The best idea to start with is, you know, draw it out and then try to put in your main beats first and then your pulses on the after. So that way you know where they're all grouping together. Okay? Alright, so next up, uh, we're going to go over to quadruple. Alright, so, <clears throat> so quadruple can either have 9, 8, 10, 8, 9, 11, or sorry, 11, 8 and 11, 16. Now, one quick side note here is that 9, 8 can actually be a compound time signature or a hybrid time signature. Because with 9, 8, you just need two, two, or two, you need three groups of two and one group of three. So two, 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 and a three. Okay? So you can have those groups, and the way you structure it and accent your beats will actually change if it's a hybrid quadruple time signature or a compound time signature. Uh, I think it would be a compound triple time signature because it would be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? Because one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay? All right, so quadruple, nine, eight. So just remember this one can also be, uh, when you see a nine, eight, don't immediately think, oh, it's a nine, eight, it must be quadruple, uh, you know, hybrid time. No, it could also be compound triple time too. So look at how the notes are grouped because it's going to kind of show you, like, you know, if they've got two little um, eighth notes grouped together and then three over there and two over there, then you know that it's not going to be um, a a compound triple time. You're going to be dealing with uh, hybrid quadruple time. So anyway, just pay careful, close attention to how the notes are grouped if you have to ever diagnose, you know, what type of time signature this is. Okay, moving along, we have 10, 8, so it's 3, uh, 3, 3, 2, 2. So 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2. Now, I just wrote it out like this, but you could actually put it in whatever order. You can go 3 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2, or you could go 3 plus 3 plus 2 plus 2, or 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3, or 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, like any combination that you can think of that has two threes and two twos it adds up to 10, because 3 plus 3 is 6, 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus 6 is 10. So there you go. Um, So that's your 10. So the idea, though, is just so that it adds up to 10 if you're trying to do 10, 8 time or figure that out. Okay, next one, we have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2. So we have three threes and one two. So that 
comes to a total of 11. Okay, and those are the ones that we're going to work on. Okay, now, so quadruple time, because it has four, we're going to use the strong, weak, medium, weak, right? Strong, weak, medium, weak, strong, weak, medium, weak. Okay, so it's like that. Now, looking down here, here's the example I drew up. So I used 10, 8 time. So I've used 4, 16, and 8 so far. So 10, 10, 8 time. So first thing you want to do is look at this. How is it grouped up? Well, you can see dead giveaway right here. Um, kind of a trick is your main beat is usually going to be the next one up from whatever you're using. So if you're using eighth notes, go up to quarter notes, and that's what your main beat is usually going to be organized on. Like sixteenth notes, you're, you're working with a main beat and eighth notes. Here, with the 5-4, you're working with um, main beats in uh, the half notes. Okay, so you see how that works? Okay, uh, be now moving along here, so first you look for any dead giveaway, see if you can figure out the structure. So this is dead giveaway here, that's dead giveaway here because this is all together. And I mean usually it is going to sort of be a dead giveaway because they have to group them in those ways to show you, um, that's part of the rules is that you have to group them in that order, you don't just do it randomly. That's why you're learning these rules right now. Is so you don't just do it randomly, you have to group it according to whatever type of time signature you're using and the beat pattern and all that stuff. Sometimes the use of like lots of rests and other things can make it look kind of obscure, but a good, um, you know, good editor or whoever's trans uh, putting it to paper, transcribing it, <laughs> basically if they um, you know, if they're good, they're going to kind of show and maybe move it so there's a little bit of space so you can see that, you know, these beats go together here and these beats go together there. And it just becomes easier to read your music that way. So, anyway, so we've got here, we've got a dot, a not a dot, a dot, not a dot. So it's compound, duple, compound, duple. And so I'm going three, two, three, two. So I used one of those patterns here. So now I go two pulses for this one, one for the rest here, and two for the sixteenth notes, because each two of these put together is one eighth note, so that's another pulse. Then we've got three here and then two there. So just keep in mind there's four for quadruple, three for triple, and two for duple. Okay? Two bigger views, okay? Then inside that like inside this, look, you could even look at this and you could think, oh, in a micro small sense, this is strong, weak, medium, weak as well inside the weak beat here. So again, the rest rules apply the same way. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about also is how do rests work in here? So, you know, rests are going to apply the same rules that inside and also in the general sense wide. You're not going to combine, here's a, here's a good example. Okay, say you have notes on the weak side and notes on the strong side, but you need rest in the middle, okay? And so you're not going to combine beat, um, what would this be, five, or sorry, four, five. Starting on beat four, you wouldn't combine beat four all the way to beat six, eight. <laughs> sorry, there's a lot of beats here. <laughs> or pulses I should say, but you wouldn't combine from there to there with one huge rest because you're looking at this. So when you look at it this in this huge picture, you wouldn't combine from here to here because this is a weak going to a medium and we can't do that, remember? So we would have to do the whole for the med the, the weak would have to be one whole rest. So that would be a quarter rest. And if this, this would be a dotted, eighth, a dotted quarter rest there. But if we had all of this with notes and we needed rest for the medium and the weak, we could just write one big rest to take them both, I think. Wait a minute. I think there's actually a side rule where you can't, um, you can't actually combine a, high, a compound with a duple. So I'm going to actually just check my notes because I don't really, re I don't want to, uh, you know, mess you guys up or anything. So. That could actually be a rule because it would be a little bit more difficult to write rests like that. So, 
Um, I'm going to do a little one more video explaining how rests work with all these things, but this is basically how hybrid time signatures work. I think it actually went easier than I thought it would, but anyway. So we're going to move along to the rest part of this, and then that will be it. Okay, so for the rests, I just wanted to check again, like I did, actually. <laughs> and uh, I was actually right. Yes, that is correct. So uh, what you're going to do... I just drew out, drew out a couple examples to kind of illustrate my point a little bit. Since you guys already know about the inner workings of the beat, I'm not going to really go into detail since I already talked about that for a couple videos back then. If you forget them, you could go back and review that, but I'm going to show you how it applies to hybrid time signatures here. Okay, so again, remember we have the groups, right? So we have the duple group here, the compound, and the duple here. Now. That's three groups, so this is a strong, weak, weak pattern because it's a hybrid triple time. So triple, you know, strong, weak, weak. Okay, so um, say this was a weak beat here. We actually would, you actually have to look at this as if it's one beat, one beat, one beat. And so how are you gonna combine those rests? Look at the actual main beats first, then once you deal with those, then go inside and go into the micro and then deal with the, the smaller beats how you would how you would normally deal with them inside like a you know a group of two or three beats inside that okay like pretend like this is a this is like the big version of a bar the strong weak weak and then inside here you could look at this as a small small weak strong weak weak there and so you wouldn't want to combine those two rest together when you have a note here at the beginning of it, okay? All right, so, so we want to put one rest here to do the whole beat, okay? This whole main beat. We're going to do it all together. But if it went over here, like say there weren't enough notes here and we had to fill this all out, we would actually put a dotted half note there. But I explained it or drew another example to illustrate that point here. Okay, so also, as strong and weak beats can't be combined together, neither can um, dotted and not dotted, or in other words, compound and simple, okay, or duple. So, it's sort of like um, hot and cold, okay? You can't put two ice cubes together because they'll melt. All right, sorry. <laughs> you can't, I was thinking something else. You can't, you can't put an ice cube in a hot, uh, hot glass of water and expect that the ice cube is gonna stay the same. It's not. They just, they're not compatible, okay? Just like black and white or, um, I don't know, like so many different, you know, the contrast, right? Tall and short, whatever. You know, they're not the same thing. It's two different things. And so, because this is three beats and this is two, you know, it's not really that it's re always gonna be that way, but you're using a compound groups of three and two, it just doesn't mix together into one note very well. So basically how it works is, the rule is you follow these like normal. And okay, so normally this, yes, that's totally acceptable. We would, you know, if we have a strong beat here and we need a rest for here, yes, we're going to put a rest for the weak by itself because the weak can't combine with the medium and the weak too because it's just a weak beat. Okay, so that's fine. But here, whoa, why do I have one here and one there? Why don't I just combine the two because it's medium and weak? I could do that, medium to weak, right? Wrong. Uh, because, look here, we have a dotted half note and a half note. So because of that, we actually can't combine those two rests together. So we have to do one for the whole main beat here and one for the whole main beat there, okay? And like I said before, if you know it gets into the main beat, it's like microly inside the next layer, that's when you, your normal rules apply. So now you're looking at like a two, four time signature here and a three, four or whatever, like three, eight or whatever. It's just three or two or Basically like that, okay? And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So it's time for some homework. Homework. No. Hey guys, all right, so for your homework, this is what we're gonna do. I would like you guys to draw 10 three bar lines. So you're gonna have three bars and for each of these kind of exercises. You're gonna pick a different time signature for each one. 
So you can, I would like you guys to use like stuff like, you know, 716, uh, 5, 4, um, you could even try 5, 2 if you want to do, I want you to use at least every single one of the, uh, the, what are they? The quadruple, <laughs> hybrid quadruple time signature. Yeah. Just, I know that's a mouthful, right? <laughs> oh man. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so draw ten of them. Find the uh, and then what I would like you to do is also use rests. And so try to construct three bars. So first thing you're going to do is select a time signature. Next thing, draw three bars of rhythm and also include some rests here and there and try to solve. Or you could just leave some certain parts blank. Or uh, no, actually don't leave them blank. Just draw the rests as you're going and construct rests with the groupings. And uh, then I want you to draw at least one of each of the different time signatures in the quadruple uh, hybrid time. So there's four, I think, in that one. And then draw at least two in the, the what is it called? Two in each of the other ones, the simple time. Oh, man, wow. Just totally out of my head right now. The simple, oh, yeah, the duple hybrid time and the triple hybrid time. <laughs> Wow, I don't know, my mind's just going off. But anyway, okay, so, um, yeah, so that's basically what we're gonna do. Then uh, after you're done drawing that out, then I want you to now label the main beats above with the strong, weak, medium, weak, or strong, weak, weak, or strong, weak, however it's supposed to go, and then draw underneath the pulses as well, okay? All right, and then check it over after you're done and make sure that no, none of the rules are being violated, that all the groupings look good. So you have to connect the 16th notes together in those groupings, right? It has to look like those notes are grouped together. All right, I just said all right a whole bunch of times. <laughs> okay, well, I that video is actually easier than I thought it was gonna be. I was just sitting there today and I'm like, oh, dread, dread, hybrid, duple times, hybrid, dread. Yeah, but it actually went easier and smoother than I thought it would. I only had to use a couple examples, and I think it basically showed you what you need to know. Okay, so uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's also about rhythm as well. Um, it's about changing time signatures and syncopations. Yay. And I'm also going to add a little on double dots at the end. All right, so I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.